Welcome to Commercial Kitchen Chronicles, a podcast dedicated to the commercial food equipment repair industry. My name is Pat Finley. I'm a lead master certified technician at General Parts. My goal is to shine a light on what I believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. I love the work I do, and I'm glad you're here listening to this podcast. In this episode, I have Colton, aka the Viking Pipe Fitter from Vegan. This episode is brought to you by Vegan. As an industry leader, Vega is committed to providing unique support for trades education and is a proud sponsor of the Commercial Kitchen Crossroads podcast. What's up, everybody? Today, I have a very special guest, Colton, aka the Viking Pipe Center back from Vega. Today, we're going to talk about Vega, V10, and everything else. So, what's going on, man? You know, same old, same old, just here at Vega headquarters. Uh, Day before the fourth, so just count hours until I can get out of here and go have some fun. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta deal with me for an hour or so, so that's cool. <laughs> no, no, I think this is like this is one of those perks of the job that people like don't realize. Like obviously everybody has to deal with like a lot of like corporate this and like we're in a I mean we're a company that sells something, so you're always trying to sell something. Mm-hmm. And obviously we're lucky to have a good product, but getting to do things like this really kind of gives like a little upper hand where I get to have some fun every now and then too. Yeah, that's probably a ghost town around here today too, isn't it? It's a little slow. I might be at one of a few cars in the parking lot. It seems like vacations, like, you know, if there's that day before the fourth, a lot of vacations get like, oh, I'm taking that day, you know, because it turns your two day weekend into a four day pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. That day before holiday, especially coming off a weekend, is, you know, that Monday before holiday is just brutal, man. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to be there. You regret yeah. not putting a vacation time to, you know, <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah. cool. So I actually went to Home Depot and they didn't have any vegan products. I was kind of mad. Which Home Depot? Uh, Noblesville, Indiana. I was looking around to see if they had any pure flow stuff because I got some techs I'm working with for the bathroom and stuff, and uh, then everything. I was kind of, I was kind of heartbroken. I was gonna take a little video and throw it up here, but yeah. So we're working on it. Um, we have a Pro Press. It's like half to one inch Pro Press on the shelf in about half the Home Depots. If you didn't know, there's two thousand Home Depots, oh, yeah. and we're in a little over half of them, and we're hoping to be in almost all of them within the next year or two. Um, and then the pure flow is hopefully coming behind it. We're working on like a mana block setup. If you guys ever seen the mana block, it's like a diverter for your entire water system. It goes right near the water heater. Um, so we're working on that. And then we're working the pecs in there too. So I got to do the Home Depot like store manager meeting. Um, I've done that the last two years. And in my little presentation group, it's like the plumbing presentation group. The Apollo Pex guy was going before me. So every single time I'd get up there and I'd be like, well, you know, like we don't have Pex here yet, but I can tell you our product's better and does what it's supposed to do and all that kind of stuff. So definitely kind of playing that in there, but I would be surprised um, to maybe see Pure Flow at the depot sooner or later. Nice. I was in a small town. Well, it's a smaller town than Indianapolis. So Indianapolis has some, uh, they got some Pro Press, some other stuff in theirs. So I was just goofing around plumbing. I uh Put a hose bib in to tie hot water so I can go outside to the shower thing I'm doing. But so to get me by. But yeah, I was like, I was kind of heartbroken. <laughs> it's gonna, you have to go to your supply house. I know you got a supply house that sells it. Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's cool. So I want to talk about the V10 program. Last time I had you on, you know, we just kind of talked about how you got involved in the trades, your journey into trades, and what you do, you know, talk about your cool job you have. You know, you get to travel around the country and sometimes probably out of the country and get to do all kinds of cool stuff. But, you know, we kind of missed on the V10 side. So I want to talk about the training opportunities that Vega does and, you know, the people you guys support. So how do you want to start? Do you want to talk about, you know, what you got going on at the facility, online, or whatever? We can do whatever. Yeah, yeah, we can just jump right into V10. So V10 is a part of Vega. Um, it's an acronym. There's tons of acronyms in Vega, if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> so it's the Vega Tra- uh, Trades Education Network. So basically it's a program for trade schools. It started off real heavy with the union schools because they're the most organized, um, easiest to organize ourselves into. And basically with an upfront fee, it was 2,500, it might be 3,000 now uh, for the first year, you get a tool and a tool that's capable of doing uh, three quarter pro press, mega press and pure flow. And then also a two and a half inch mega press joint. And then on top of that, you get unlimited fittings and access to our learning management system, which is Blue Volt right now. So now once we've trained them, we kind of train the trainer and then they have the ability to give credentials to all of their students, as well as PowerPoints on a lot of different things. So it's not all press. 
Um, we have like a piping 101, advanced offsets and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a way for us to kind of get into those trade schools and show that we're more than support just across our fittings, but support across the entire trade and like the industry in general. So it's a really cool program. Basically you get more, uh, more in tooling. When you buy that, you get more tools in money than the actual program costs. So right off the bat, you're money ahead. But then on top of that, you get a ton of access to everything that we do. Um, we have uh, groups that come out. We have two different, or I think it's four different symposiums. We'll, we'll bring out a bunch of trainers, either this facility or to Nashua to do those train the trainers programs. So a ton of different ways to get in there. Me and my buddy, Ricky, who's also a UA local three plumber. I'm out of 208, which is gonna be the pipe fitters here in Denver. We actually train at UAITP now too. So because we're in that program, we take V10 to UAITP, which is a week long course for two different classes on everything you could ever wanna know about Vega Press. So it's kind of a really cool way to just get in everybody's head, show them that this is a way that needs to go and train on not only our stuff, but other people's stuff and kind of show the industry how it's going and get those younger kids tied in. So at a young age, they know how to use everything. That's a really good, that's a really good deal. 25 or three, you know, probably 3000 now, but I mean, that's, that's a pretty good investment. I mean, pretty good payoff too. So well, like for a standard, yeah, for a standard size tool, that's how much you pay. And we're giving you more than that right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, I always tell people, like, it can't be that hard of a sell. We're like, we're going to give you more in tools, plus you get access to everything else. So, like, it's just a really great program. Um, Troy Locke, um, if you guys have seen yep. him, trainer Troy, he's the one who heads up that program. He's the manager of it. Just a great guy with a ton of knowledge in the industry. Sweet. I may have to talk to you guys about that and maybe try to work something for my guys. So, that's Absolutely. cool. So, I always see all these pictures and these videos of this crazy facility. You're in there right now. So, what is this you have going on right here? Um, so in our seminar center, so we have two of them. There's one in Nashua, which was the first one, which was the first one we brought to America. So we first came to America. Our headquarters was actually in Nashua, New Hampshire. They found out super quickly that it wasn't big enough to house all the people for the way the market was growing. So we gave over and we now have our national headquarters here for North America in Broomfield, Colorado. So across the way right here, just like night across the street, the other building is headquarters. And then where I'm standing is one of the shops in the Vega Seminar Center. So there's two different shops. There's two shops slash classrooms, and then there's two just classrooms. So like PowerPoint, shops, hands-on training. Down the center of the aisle, we've got the ILC, which is the Interactive Learning Center. It's all of our products actually in use. They're touchable displays. Uh, there's monitors where you can touch and see behind the wall and see the piping and see how all these different things work together. So we put a lot of people through here, um, usually about 8,000 people a year come through the seminar center to learn everything you could ever want to learn about press. We give them a show, uh, we take them out to a fun little endeavor and stuff like that. And it's just our way of uh, doing training like nobody else does. Nobody else has a facility like this and nobody else can train the way that we do, that's for sure. That's really cool, man. I, I love seeing you know all the stuff you guys have there and I didn't realize it was as in depth as it was. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's nice that we kind of get to tie into the community and we get to train in a way that makes sense. So I don't know if you guys have ever done trainings with other companies, but it's like, Hey, check out our PowerPoint. We're going to run you through 20, 30 slides. And now you're going to know how to do this. So we do have a little bit of PowerPoint here and there, but we really like the hands-on aspect. So you guys will all watch my Instagram and watch Vegas Instagram. We do a lot of like the shots from here in my shop, just because I kind of built it up to be ready for that. It's a nice little backdrop and stuff. But the real purpose of this outside of that is to do these cool trainings that we do for people. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I uh, hope one day I'll be able to come out there and check out the place. I mean, uh, we got a branch out in, in Denver area, so maybe one day I can come out and check the place out. So Absolutely. Yeah, and anybody's able to do that. So get with your local Vega rep, um, and they can set up a training for you. There's different ways to pay for it. You can just pay for it right out of your pocket as a company and be like, we want to pay for it. Pretty much it's just the airfare and the hotel that you're paying for. Um, there's co-op dollars if you work with the wholesaler. The wholesaler is like, man, it's a good idea. We want to get these guys out here, get them trained up. Obviously, the idea for them is if they understand our product and they know that your customers understand the product, they're going to come back and buy more of it. Um, so it's kind of like a twofold thing where it works for everybody. You guys get the information you want, and then also we can end up getting more sales out of it because now you know, hey, maybe you didn't know that you can use ProPress on a – you know, pure grain alcohol, and you could build a moonshine still out of ProPress. So, like little things like that that we just don't know that people could do that they don't know about. Uh, hey, you got my wheels turning there, man. <laughs> I thought about building the steel, but I I got enough hobbies. I don't need to start something else. <laughs> yeah, finish finish your Jeep before you start building the moonshine still. Uh, dude, I got all kinds of stuff, man. I got the Jeep. I got I bought a ton of these high powered electric RC cars. I, I'm terrible, man. I like 
I just hobby hop left or right. It's it, it's bad. It's expensive and it's dumb. And I rarely stick with anything long enough to make anything of it before I move on to something else. Jeep's like the longest thing I've had. I've had it for five years and it's paid off. So now, now it's time to let the fun begin on it. So hell yeah, I'm the same way. Like you ask my wife and you'd be like, this dude never sticks with anything because I've got blacksmithing. I've done glass blowing. Like my garage is just a pile of things that have happened and still kind of happened and used to happen. But like, it's really hard to stick with any one thing for too long. Dude, I, I was obsessed with like forge and fire. Yep. And I wanted to like, I wanted to start start a forge and I never did it. And um, uh, there's a place south of me like, two hours and they have, a, you can like book a time and go in there and they teach you how to build a knife and you make your own knife. And I'm like, I told my, my son wants to do it too. I was like, me and him are going to go down there one weekend and we're just going to spend a day down there. We're going to pay the money, go down there and take a class and make our own knives. And my wife's like, no, you're not because you won't come back and buy a forge. You won't buy this. You want to buy this. I'm like, but she's just as bad as me. I'm looking over here at her corner. She's got a laser, two 3D printers. She's got <laughs> gallons of resin. I mean, it's like, she's just as bad as me. So we, we put well, it pretty well. And forge isn't that much, bro. You can get a good forge for 400 bucks. Piece of railroad tie. That's what I did. Me and my buddy were driving down the road and they were tearing out a railroad. So like we were in the work truck at the time. I was like, dude, we got to pop out and get a chunk of this railroad. So we popped out Milwaukee Porter van, hacked off a chunk of the railroad. And I have a piece of railroad tie that's about that big. It was, it took a while to cut. It was a couple blades. We threw it in the truck and we were off to the races and I got a forge. And now I like, I just beat my iron on that piece of railroad tie. Oh, so awesome. I've never checked into that. I know some guys that work for the railroad, so I can probably get a chunk of free. Yep. I was just laughing, dude. I was like, somebody pulls up, we're in my work truck from my old company with the Porter van, like cutting a piece of the railroad off. Like none of this looks good, but it's totally fine. It's all above board and we're all good. <laughs> cool. So I see a lot about this New York thing that just opened up. What's going on out there in New York? Yep. So we call that the Vega Experience Center. Um, so basically it's like a hub for that region. So we're looking forward to hopefully having VECs in all of our, like, what we call our mega regions. Mm -hmm. So we have the training centers. Sometimes it's hard to get people to travel and get them to come all the way across the country. So in these big hubs like New York City, where a ton of work is going on, we wanted somewhere to showcase the product, um, be able to have the ability to do trainings there, have the ability to really kind of bring in people from that hub without entirely like giving them a giant trip. So it's a meeting space. Um, you can have people come in and experience our products, kind of get an understanding for it. And a lot of cool stuff that goes with it. They got like this computer board um, and it faces out over the city because it looks over the river at New York City. And on that computer board, there's a bunch of projects that have Vega products in it. So it highlights them. You can click on it and it's like, here's the building. Here's the Vega products used in it. So you can look at the skyline and then take it down to the computer and be like, oh man, Vega is all over New York if you actually uh -huh. think about it. That's insane. That's pretty cool. So that, yeah, that's that's cool. I've seen you know, I've seen you out there a couple of times. I've seen you know some of the other people from Instagram and stuff on there, and I'm like, man, that's like a blast. That's cool. That's really cool. You guys get to do that. It's awesome that we get to do it. But like the main thing with everything we talk about, mm -hmm. and I always forget to say this, is like you guys all have the capability oh, yeah. to come and do these things. And I think it's really hard sometimes because people don't know their Vega, you know, rep. We call them a rep, but they work directly for Vega. We don't just have sales reps out there from other people who know Vega products. We have our people who are in your region. We call them district sales managers who can help you get into these different things. So if you guys need to, you can reach out to the Vega page. You can reach out to my page. Um, you can email us, whatever you need to do to get in touch and actually know who your Vega person is because they're out there in the field. They know your product. They know your area. They know the wholesaler to buy it from. They're like your first point of contact. That's how you get into trainings. That's how you get to go see the Vega Experience Center, all that kind of stuff. Like you got to know the guy in your region. So if somebody reaches out to me, I'm always like, hey, where are you? Like, what's your zip code? And I'm like, here's the number and the email of like your person. Like, I'm always here to support you, but we've got a giant network. Mm -hmm. It's like 300 guys out there, guys and girls out there to help you in your region. And it's really important that you actually know who that person is. That's cool. That's cool. I'll have to reach out and figure out who my person is in Indiana. Exactly. And you're in Indiana? Indianapolis. Yeah, I'm in Indianapolis area. Yeah, so that'll be Frank. I know Frank will. I'll send you his information. I've gotten really good at it. Luckily, I've had to do this so many times that people are like, I'm like, where are you? And they say the first, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's this guy. And I like send the email. And they're like, how do you just know that off the top of your head? I'm like, well, I've done this about 8,000 times. So, like, hopefully I know somebody in the region. If not, we got to look up to him. We get you guys hooked up. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, I seen you did a pretty cool uh, project last week. Um, Vega and Miracle Mechanical did another, uh, looks like a, just a, did you do a whole repipe or just a water heater or what'd you guys do? 
Um, so it was a little bit of a repipe, and we put in a direct top uh, water heater. I always want to say hot water heater. You can tell I'm a pipe fitter because the plumbers yeah. just laugh when I say hot oh, water. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's not hot. <laughs> the water's hot when it leaves not when it gets there yeah yeah, yeah. so um so basically there's a family um a lady and her husband they've got three kids just a little bit down on their luck um that's what miracle mechanical does that's trade pro or uh, you know tool pros and tool wife and then the miracle mechanical like is the mother over that um so they find somebody who's in need vega gives a bunch of money and a bunch of fittings to help them out in that so what we did was we replaced the water heater it was just a 40 gallon tank you can imagine five people in a house, two people take a shower, no longer is your tank full and you gotta wait for that thing to fill and reheat. So we put in the direct fire um, water heater for them and then they had a shower valve that was all screwed up, tore that out and pressed that back in and now they're off to the races and that family's hooked up and they've got hot water all the time. So Vika really loves to give back. We do it in so many ways other than just miracle mechanical, but it's one of those things where people really get to see it. You know what I mean? Like we want everyone to kind of get an idea for as much as we're doing. And it, like, it's kind of crazy how it played out. So nobody really knows our slogan or like what Vega's like base is. But uh, what we like to say is we are installing the lifelines of the buildings of the future. So we're really into water quality. If you look at like our mother and like Vega Germany and like where everything comes from, it's all about water quality and doing it the right way the first time. So we got to help somebody out with water quality, obviously. Um, and then on top of that, you know, we really are installing that lifeline of the building of the future. So we gave them something that's going to last and they're going to get to use into the future. Obviously working with Brent and working with Kathleen is always super awesome. They're just really good people. And it's funny, kind of like, you, you know, you know, people on Instagram or like through these social platforms and then you meet them in person and work with them. And like, Brent is one of those guys that like, I think he's good to a fault. Oh, yeah. Like, I think like, he's so good that I think people will like try to take advantage and things like that. And he's just so good. That he's gonna kind of come back and do it over and over again no matter what people have done to him he's so good he can't stop it and that's just it's a great thing to see in the trades for sure yeah i, I followed brent and kathleen for years and i met him at ahr not last year year before and like they're the nice people in the world and, you know i did brent's podcast and you know i talked to him and like i met him occasionally just asked him what's going on and stuff like that and they really are truly like the nicest people in the world you know people always say that people put up that front on on the internet and i was like man i don't know it's like i don't think it's a front on just for the internet these people truly care and they're truly genuine people yeah well and to find a family so there's so much work that goes into it up until that you guys see the video you know they released the video and it's like oh good job it's like man there was months into finding the person and finding somebody who needed it and how are we going to coordinate it how are we going to make it happen and then they bring out their own crew and trucks so like i got to work with one of their guys and he was super nice and like he really understood the industry and was super happy to give back to him. So it's just, it's kind of crazy uh, that there are people out there like that. And believe it or not, most of the time, in my opinion, we find them in the trades because we're all down here. We're all blue collar. We look out for each other in a way that other people don't. That's for sure. Well, I mean, I know. I mean, yeah, I agree hundred percent. So I grew up dirt poor. I didn't have nothing. I mean, my father died when I was a year and a half old and I kind of bounced around from house to house and, you know, I didn't really have much. And then now, you know, that, I've done what I've done in my life and to become better, I try to give back. I try to help out any, anybody I can just because I know what it's like. And I mean, it's pretty cool to see that. So I told him, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta be a part of this somehow, some way one day I'll end up down there doing something to help out. So. Heck yeah. Well, I don't know if you've ever been to Georgia, but it seems like in Georgia, a lot of people piped a lot of things wrong over the years. So it's nice to pop in there and be like, let's do this right. Like let's get people set up in the right direction this time instead of what happened in the past. Uh, my my supply lines are right. I bet my drains are pretty sketchy in my house, but my supply lines are good. I, I uh, ripped out a bunch of uh, galvanized pipe and I put pecs in and put a manifold in and did all that. So uh, that part's at least good. The drains are kind of sketchy, but <laughs> drains just suck, dude. You want to start replacing drains? Like I have the same problem. I have a couple that like back up here and there, and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep snaking them and I'm gonna keep cleaning them because I'm not doing a repipe and tearing every piece of drywall out of my house to try to make it work right. I'm not gonna lie, I got some tutor vents in there because the venting is definitely not right. <laughs> well, my family's they like throwing grease down the drain. I'm like, you guys are absolutely killing me. So there's a section, there's like a, a six foot section of two inch BBC in my uh in my um basement that's just like it's got it's got fur goes in it holding it together because I go down there and I just I push on it, you can feel how heavy it is, and I just take it out and just take it outside and just beat it on the ground, beat all the beat all the grease out and put it back in there. I'm like 
I told you guys stop doing this, man. I was like, yep. you're killing me. Stop pouring grease down the drain. It's never okay. I don't care if there's hot water in there. I don't care what you do. It's not okay. It's just funny that people think that the drain is magic. People put anything down a drain in a house. Like, it's not a trash can. I don't even have a clean out outside. My house is like 125 years old, dude. So okay. I don't even have a clean out outside. I need to put one in because I had to have it snaked a couple of years ago. And uh, the guy was like, you don't have a clean out. He's like, I'm not pulling your tub. He's like, I'm digging up your yard, putting a clean out in it. And I'm like, he had it scheduled. They like they came into the marked the underground, and then it, whatever it was broke free, and I canceled it. And it's been like five years. I'm like, oh, I'm just I'm just waiting for the day where someone's gonna dig up my yard, put a clean out in. I mean, it is what it is. It's just always hard because nobody wants to do the stuff that they have to do. You mm-hmm. like work in plumbing, and you're like, I need this for my house, but you're like, but I'd rather go out to dinner and take this trip, and I'm never gonna see that pipe. And then when it happens, it's like, oh, all right. Hopefully we got five grand sitting around to like make this fix happen. <laughs> well, luckily they uh this town's like they're this the, our sewer, our fire infrastructure is outdated. It's a little farm community. And uh instead of putting new drains in or new sewer lines in, they just repiped everything. They're relining everything. So they're yeah. pipelining everything. The problem was like they're supposed to knock on your door and tell you they're doing it. And they didn't do it. And I don't have I don't have a clean outside. They couldn't open a clean out, so they just do what they had to do. When they forced that area in there, it blew it back up out through the toilet and just blew that crap everywhere all over my bathroom, dude. It was <laughs> terrible. My wife's working from home. She's like, I heard this god awful sound, and she's like, there was water everywhere in the bathroom. I was like, great. Literally, shit exploding back into our house. So happy. Thanks a lot, city. <laughs> I told her I was like, just put like a couple towels on it, tape it down or something. I don't know. I was like, you're not gonna stop it. I said, we don't have a way to stop it. I mean. It's got a vent, but it's still gonna happen. <laughs> yep. Oh man, the the fun of plumbing, you know. I think you and I are lucky that we're pipe fitters and kitchen people and all that kind of stuff. Because I know there's bad parts of my job, and I know that plumbers they make really good money and they got a really sweet job. But sometimes you know, like it's just it's not as much fun to deal with. You know what I mean? Everybody makes fun of them. Well, they got to deal with poop all the time. That's not what they do all the time. But when you do have to do it, like, I don't know, I got a queasy stomach and like, I'm like, why well, I bitch out on those ones. I'm like, I guess this isn't my job. Like, <laughs> uh, I could probably do it. I wouldn't like it. But I'm, I'm fascinated by those guys that do it though. I mean, like, it's, like, it's no big deal. Like, you know, you watch George and some of those other guys are, you know, really heavily drain cleaning guys. And they're just like, yeah, they're popping the caps off and just letting crap float out and clean the drain. Like, you know, like it's, just a normal day when you know it's good money it's what you're used to they do it in a clean safe way like they're like built in for it and they know what they're doing where it's a little different when i decide that i need to clean and drain my house i have no idea what i'm doing i'm like here we go and like things are going wrong and it's like you know it's going haywire but it is what it is uh that's awesome yeah i always see all those guys with their crazy tools i'm like man I want to buy this. I want to buy this. I'm like, I have no reason to buy this, but I want to buy this. And I want to do this. I do have the air snake and the air snake's badass. I don't know if you ever seen that. Yeah. It like plugs the drain and it just shoots a shot of air through there. So like minor things, it just blows it through into the main. My shower every now and then, I don't know if it's hair, what it is, but it'll back up. And I just walk in there and like, Pook. I don't tell my wife. I'm like, oh man, I got to clean the drain. Like, give me a couple hours. Like I'll figure this out and blah, blah. And I just walk in there and I come back out like later. I'm like, hey, I got it. It was a tough day, but I got it for you. <laughs> it's probably hair, man. My wife, it was worse when I had my daughter lived here, but now it's just my wife is not as bad. But man, it was it was like every other month when my daughter was here. It's just like, please. Yep. I'm like, I'd go in the bathroom and there'd be a like clumps of hair on the shower wall. I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, throw it on the sink or something and throw it so away. It down, so it doesn't go down the drain. They're being nice to you. I used to always rag on her. I'm like, it's your hair, blah, blah. And then she cut her hair pretty short. She had like a nice little bob. It was super cute. Um, and at that time, it's when I had like the big long Viking braid. Mm-hmm. She's like, your hair is as long as mine. She's like, you're blocking the drains just as bad as I am. Like, no longer is this my fault. And I was like, uh, damn, like you're right. Like we're we're in the same boat. <laughs> my wife tries blaming me because I shaved my head. I'm like, no, my hair is not blocking that drain. <laughs> it's a different type, but yeah, it's a different type. I like to do, you know, when you shave up your neck and you do it over the sink and then you just leave the. My yes. wife calls it man glitter. Just leave my man glitter across the entire bathroom. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's great. Commercial Kitchen Chronicles podcast is proudly sponsored by Vega and the Vega Trades Education Network. Vega is a leader in press technology and a large supporter of trade education through their V10 programs. So, um, I seen you guys uh, were involved in Skills Canada. So cool, super epic. Um, so, I don't know if like how much you know about it. Do you know anything about it, or just that it exists? I know a little bit about it. I was trying to get involved in the Skills USA because um, the company I teach for is actually trying to get like a commercial kitchen side of it. 
Hell yeah. Because um, like, it's pretty big. I, I didn't realize it existed until, like two or three years ago. And then like all the different trays, there's like hairdressing, dog grooming. It's like everything. It's it's insane. I don't know if Canada is just just as diverse. Oh yeah, it's if it's if it's a skilled trade, it's there, and that's something I didn't realize until we got there. Because you know, in the beginning, there's this ceremony, and they're coming in with their flags and all the different regions and all that stuff. I'm like, I'm like, man, this is a lot of like plumbers and pipe fitters and stuff. And then like we got into the actual convention, like you said, it's hairdressers, it's automotive. It's a uh, chef. So they had people doing like fine mm -hmm. chef work and stuff. They're like, it's everything you could think of. And like, I don't know, for me, it was one of those amazing things. I'm like, this is how we show people. Like, this is the true like skilled trades network to where people yeah. can understand like what I think the backbone of not only America, but Canada is and across the world. Like, this is what makes everything work. This is what people depend on and they get to showcase their skills and like maybe win. It was like, I don't know, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I was super impressed with it. I wish I had seen something like that when I was in high school because I was like, you know, you got to go to college, blah, blah, blah. And luckily, my pops helped me find the trades after I kind of flunked out of college. And I don't know about flunked out. I didn't go to class, but I think that still counts as flunking out. <laughs> um, but it's just like a cool thing to see and show these people and like these young kids are like, man, you don't have to do it the other way. You could make good money and do something with your hands, which is it's awesome. Yeah, I, I really I'm trying to get my company involved in it next year, hopefully we can because they just had the. Uh, the one here in America, the big national one, uh, a couple weeks ago in Atlanta. So, I'd really like to see more of like my side in it. Like that's my main goal is to try to push like what I do because there's not a whole lot of people know that this industry even exists. And you know, thankfully I got people like you, you know, Vega and some other companies that stand behind me and support me. That, you know, help me kind of highlight and showcase this. But I want to try to get you know get more involved with like skills and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool to see you guys up there. Hell yeah. It's one of those things, like I always point out to people, it's good for the goose and good for the gander. Mm -hmm. so, like everybody's like, why would you do that? Why do you go waste your time? It's like, well, not only do we get to support somebody, now everybody gets to see our products. Not only do you get to support the commercial kitchen industry, everybody gets to see what you're a part of. So it's like a really cool way to go. I was super happy because like we went out there and the pipe fitter section had a whole lot of press in it. Um, so we got there and I didn't even know this. They're like, well, we were like the couple of the B10 guys were there. And they're like, we're going to give them a training tomorrow on like press and deflection and this and that and how to install it because some of them never pressed before. So that when they start the actual competition, they know what they're doing. And they're like, but you're here. So why don't you show up early tomorrow and like you do the training for them? And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, piece of cake. Like, what stuff do you guys have? We'll get them laid out and all that kind of stuff. So I think in our competition, there was like eight or 10 guys and gals. And you could tell like some were definitely listening. So they were all very intrigued and wanted to make sure. You know, I'm showing them all the tricks. I'm showing them deflection. I'm showing them how to rotate the fitting with the tool once you kind of started the press on that tool, how you can adjust things afterwards and stuff like that. So I showed them a bunch of things. And I'm like, man, I really hope they're getting this. The kid who won it, the guy who won and got first place in that competition to move on to the next layer of like skills, uh, the symposium, um, he actually hit me up on Instagram. He's like, dude, I definitely won because I listened to you. He's like, I didn't know I could rotate pro press fittings and repress them. He's like, so I made a mistake, you know, a mistake, fixed it during the competition. He's like, and I came out miles ahead of everybody else. He's like, so, you know, it's just cool to see that. But then it just digs back into like everything else. Like training is the key to what we do. If you know what you're doing and you understand it better than other people, that's how you become the best at what you do. So like somebody who really took the time to listen to me and stuff like that did really well. Kind of, you know, I get to pat myself on the back, but then also you just feel good about the way that went. Like, so glad I was there. So glad I got to help somebody, you know, and then Vega obviously gets to be there in the competition and kind of show off that, you know, we've got these different applications people didn't know about. Yeah, that's really cool. I love seeing all the guys, the new stuff you guys putting out, but I didn't realize you could rotate those until you guys put a video like a month ago. I'm like, oh, this is genius. I was like, I had no idea you could do that. I was like, well, I guess I got to cut it, you know, or you know, put a slip joint in there or something, you know, or, but no, just rotate it and repress it and go. I always get the, like, how do you have a job as a vegan trainer? Like, you just put the fitting on and pull the trigger. I'm like, man, if it was that simple, I definitely wouldn't have a job teaching people how to do it. And there's just so many things that people don't know about. Like the hose bib adapter, you know, that fitting that goes onto a ball pro press fitting so you can test the system and move on. Nobody knows about that. That thing was slick, dude. I seen that and I was like, that is badass, dude, because you just put it on there and no big deal. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Test that system, whatever, take it back off, and then move on with the rest of your fittings. Like, if you don't know, you don't know. And we've got 17,000 different products. So if you haven't seen it or heard about it, you don't know. And like, that's a big thing that Vega has allowed me to do is like, hey, I got these ideas. Let me hit you guys up. 
work with the marketing department. They're like, yeah, we're going to film them. Let's get these set up and throw them out there so that people know about it. It's a really cool way to go and just create interest in something that people didn't know they could be interested in. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, I always tell you and Becca, I was like, dude, your guys' seltzer team absolutely blows it out of the water. You guys are phenomenal, man. You, you know, the stuff's entertaining and it's informative. I'm like, you guys hit everything that needs to be. You show off some new stuff. You show off technologies. Like, just these, you guys get it, man. So, hats off to you guys and Vegan. Really appreciate that. I know that uh, Becca and then also Sarah. Sarah yeah. is a big part of our team, and Sarah is a great editor, and she has like a really good eye for the way things should be shot. So. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, like two, two and a half years ago when I started off, it was all a little bit different. You know, I'd never even touched social media. So I had a lot of goofy videos going out there, um, but like kind of keying in on that. And like you said, we want to make it fun, but also like a little bit of training and like interesting to draw people in. Cause I think most companies, you go to any other company's like social page and it's like, here's our product, here's what it does, here's this thing, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, nobody's watching, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. It could be the greatest thing in the entire world. And there's like, Flip, like I'm going right past that. I don't, I don't, I could give two shits less about your, what you want to call it, unless mm -hmm. you make it fun, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can only see the background of one video, you know, see one background 40 times in a video, and it's the same thing over and over and over. You just, you tune off, you see it come up, and you just scroll on. You never know what we're going to see if your guys is. So, is Sarah the blonde? Is she the blonde that's in some of the videos occasionally? Yep, yep, that's yeah. Sarah. She's yep. Uh, super cool. She's been here almost a year now. Mm -hmm. um, she's really young, uh, which is like perfect. So I think when Becca was looking at hiring her, it was like, well, she's young, doesn't have that much experience. It's like, well, this is social media. She's got the experience in all mm -hmm. the areas where we need the experience. You know what I mean? So like, this is the perfect hire for this position. Dude, I'm trying to get my son involved in it because, you know, he's 20 years old, but I mean, my son, he does not want anything to do with social media anymore, man. Like he had a huge, his, his TikTok was huge. He had videos of like over millions of views. Like him and his friends just doing some dumb stuff. I mean, huge videos, and like he deleted them all. I'm like, what are you doing? I was like, I'd kill if I had a video that had like a half that or a quarter of those views, dude. Yeah. Go. You know, it's always there's a little bit of devil in social media. Mm -hmm. On my end, I feel like it's all been very positive. Mm -hmm. I've gotten great positive feedback and help people. Um, but it does draw you in. It's mm -hmm. meant to be extremely engaging, so that you don't want to leave it. So there's the there's the ups and the downs. I think as long as people understand that. You know, I try to set time limits around where I'm going to screw around with it when I'm not. So it doesn't just encompass my entire life where I'm just on it all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So there's always a way to like kind of kind of gauge those things. And in my mind, treat it like a business. You know, if you're going to be using it as a platform to help grow your business or educate or whatever it's going to be, treat it like that. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing it for fun to scroll and stuff, that's great. Just realize that at that point now you are a consumer and you're not like getting anything back from it. You're mm -hmm. on there to give to the people who are actually putting out content. So as long as you kind of realize your role in there and like what you want out of it, it works really, really well. Yeah. When I, I used to just be a consumer, you know, before I started the podcast and all stuff, I just, you know, just scroll through looking at stuff. It was cool. And I started a podcast and I was like, I started doing, it. I was like, man, this is like a second full-time job. Just like putting stuff out there to back this up. I mean, don't, I'm not, I may sound like I'm complaining about it. I mean, I love it. It's cool, but it's just like, man, I didn't realize how much work it was because, I mean, there's algorithms that say you don't want to put stuff out every day. Then there's guys that say you do want to put stuff out every day. I'm like, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I try it one way. It doesn't work. Try it the other way. It doesn't work. And occasionally I'll have some video that'll give me like 100,000 views. And I'm like, this is the dumbest thing in the world, but whatever. Yep. Hit that trend. You hit the right amount of time. It goes out to a community. It doesn't normally go out to. Those are all kind of those big things, um, you know. And just be careful of the people who are out there telling you like, hey, pay for my advice and this and that. Nope. The thing that always makes me like laugh is like there's these people who have all these views and all these followers and all they talk about is how to do well on a certain platform. And then I always like to point out to people that are watching them. I'm like, why do you think their platform is doing well? I'm like, they're getting pushed out to the algorithm because they're literally talking about what you're on. So like, mm -hmm. of course, like if you're telling people how to do well on Instagram, this is the trending audio for Instagram. Instagram shoving that to everybody because it's put more Instagram down your throat. Mm -hmm. So I think platforms themselves need to do a better job supporting people outside of that little bubble. You know what I mean? Like supporting people that are doing other things and teaching people in another way. So I'm always here. If you guys want advice, like I'm, I'm free and I'll tell you what I think and what has worked for me in the past. I'm by no means like a guru. I think in a lot of ways I'm lucky, but I've also been able to like work with vegan and a team who actually does it as a job. So I get a lot of that kind of information back from them on like, 
you know, when's the right time to post and how do you do this and how do you do that? And why are people doing this? Because when you do it all day and it's your job and you're, you know, you're paying for say like a, a platform that tells you about what's working and when to post and stuff like that. Obviously that's a little bit insider info that maybe the small guy's not going to have. Yeah. You've had some pretty good growth here lately. Uh, you get to what 11 K now. 11 K my giveaway is still coming. I'm still doing the giveaway. I know everybody's all pissed off because I said at 10 K and then it went to 11 and I still haven't done it. Um, but I'm releasing a clothing brand and the clothing brand is going to go with the giveaway. So right. that's right. happening. I'm talking to my guy today. He's making moves on getting it out there. So when those two come, they're going to come together right. and a little sneak peek. I've got uh, since that extra thousand followers that I told everybody I'd add something to that giveaway. Um, it's going to get even bigger. And I'm going to add a little bit more to it. So if you guys yeah. didn't know, the 350 Pro Press, Mega Press, and Pure Flow Jaws all the way up to two inch. Um, the 115 with Pro Press and Pure Flow Jaws, half and three quarter. And there's one more little add on. And I say little add on, about another thousand to twelve hundred dollar uh, add on that's going to be coming. And I'll release that out to you guys. If you subscribe to me, I'm going to let all my subscribers know that they have uh, the insider track on that, what it's going to be. And also, if you subscribe to me, you get double entries when it starts. Just by being a subscriber, you get double entries to all the giveaway stuff. So I know it sounds far-fetched, but the tools are in my garage. I do have them. It is absolutely coming. This wasn't like a follower grab or anything like that. Uh, I finally, I did my uh, 1,000 YouTube one. I finally, uh, people were hitting me up Saturday, asking me when, the, when I was going to do it. And I was like, I just stopped it yesterday. I was like, I'll get to it, guys. And so I just made it a little video. I just, you know, uh, did the link and you know did the video and true the winner and did that yesterday so that guy was happy and excited um it was only four hundred dollars like i'm not a i don't have a extra 350 to throw around or anything so. no it's awesome well and you know like that's kind of one of the things i've gotten lucky on personally you know yeah. So oh yeah this isn't like a vega giveaway you know it's not like through anybody it's just things that i've acquired through everything mm -hmm. that i've done special tools i've gotten to like show off and mm -hmm. things like that that I've like either doubled up on or man, if I'm like in the industry, like honestly, if I absolutely need to do something in my house, I can borrow a tool from here. So I don't have to have every single tool sitting on the shelf at my house. Yeah. So oh, yeah. this is my little way of giving back to the community because I really do appreciate you. So it'll it'll be a pretty sweet one. And then also hopefully you guys buy some of my clothes and you guys give back to me too. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'm going to buy a, hopefully you got a hat because I need a hat and then uh, I'm going to buy, I'll probably buy some shirts from you too. I'm Hell yeah, uh, yeah. trying to get back on his uh, eating right stuff and uh, trying to make a habit of it. It's been hard, man. I've been doing a lot of like 6 a.m. jobs, like an hour and a half, two hours away every day. And it's just, I, I say, I'm going to come home and work out. And I'm just so worried. I come, I, I'll come, i leave at four in the morning and then I get home at six, seven at night. And the last thing I want to do is work out. So uh, I'm on vacation this week. So I just made it a, made it a goal. I'm still getting up at five. I'm going to get up and do my cardio and stuff, and then I'll start working on the other stuff i got planned. So oh, yeah. I'm just trying to get back on it. It's, it's rough, dude. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not one to lie about what I've done. I mean, like, I was up to, like, 440. I've had a 100-pound swing, like, four times in the last eight years. That's so hard, too. It's hard to get there. It's hard to come back. It's hard to get there and come back again. Like, that's such a battle. I, well, I did the fad diets, and the problem is the fad diets, you lose it really fast, but you gain it back really fast, too. So – it's it needs to be more of a lifestyle than just some gimmick that's you know yep. out there that oh you can lose this much weight well yeah i'm losing much weight because i'm eating 800 calories a day i'm eating five times a day but i'm eating 800 to a thousand calories a day i'm just starving myself and you know, yep. you're weak and you can't do anything you're just depleted and yeah you know, i'm just trying to do it the right way now so it's hard but you know i'll get there well you hit the nail on the head it's a lifestyle and i've always told people don't give you know 10 eight, 10, 12 hours to a company all day and not schedule self, yourself in an hour or two hours for yourself. That's the most insane thing on the face of the planet. To be like, I can do it. I'll sell my time all day to somebody else to help them benefit, but you can't schedule in that time for yourself. So that's kind of how I do it. I make sure that like, it's not on my schedule, but I know every single day I've got this amount of time that is blocked out for me to do it. My life's easier than most. I don't have kids. I got dogs and a cat, so it's a little bit different. And I understand other people have a little bit different struggles out there, but I really do believe that everyone has the power to do that and give themselves that benefit. And I think you're a great case for it, dude. Like you just, you just said you're gone for 12 to 14 hours and you know, you're still making the strides to make what needs to happen at home too. Yeah. My problem is like a lot of the guys that do give those long days aren't required to do it. They just kind of like do it on their own. Cause they like what they do and they take pride in what they do and they, they want to do more. 
but like you said, you got to make sure you take time for yourself. And it's just trying to figure that out. So, you know, luckily my wife's an early, early bed person. She wants to go to bed like nine o'clock. So I can get to bed at nine and get up at three thirty or four and still have, you know, six, seven hours sleep. And I can get up and, you know, I can either do cardio or I can work out. I get stuff out in the barn and then, you know, go about my day. So as long as I don't have an early job, I do pretty good about doing this. So. Well, the morning is the trick. I mean, like everybody, you, you know, everybody's heard Goggins like, I'm carrying the boats. Like, it sucks. And I do it every day. Like, everybody hears that. But the only thing that has ever made it work for me, and that's why I get up so early and do it in the morning, is like you said, I'm not tired at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And like trying to do something else and squeeze it in. If I can get up before and get it done, now I'm, the rest of my day's free. I got to go to work and then whatever I want after that versus, you know, oh, now I still got to go and do the gym at five o'clock and fight the crowds or whatever it is. So, I know I'm an early riser and not everybody is, but I'm pretty sure you can beat that into your own head. Like yeah. I wasn't an early riser until I started the trades and I had to get up every day and be to work by six. And all of a sudden now I'm a morning person. So, well, Even when I'm off work, I, like, I wake up, it's like 4.30 in a month. Why do I wake up? Yeah. This is stupid. This is terrible. Stuff. <laughs> but you know, really like, awesome with my wife when I wake up and it's like four in the morning, 4.30 in the morning on Saturday. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? What do you want to get into? And she's like, how about you shut the fuck up? <laughs> how, about, like, how about you leave me alone <laughs> so when i do my cardio i just watch goggins uh, interviews on youtube that's all i do when i do my cardio in the morning i just watch goggins like i had the doors open all of my garage doors and have it on the tv just loud as can be it's like 4 30 in the morning it's dark outside and it's just goggins just screaming at some interview <laughs> i'm waiting on someone to drive by and look in my barn and be like what the hell is this guy doing well, and it's funny how some people that inspire some people watch somebody like that and they're like oh, i'm gonna do it i'm just like him and then other people see that and like, well, I could never do that. And it's not for me. So I think it's nice that we have so much stuff out there to kind of reach out to all these different people. Cause not everybody is going to get inspired to buy the, like, you're not doing it and you're weak and you need to start type of thing. You know, that works great for most of the trades people. Cause that's what we're used to. But a lot of the population, you start talking to them like that and they're like, well, that's in one ear and right out the other. I don't do motivational. I need to find this on my own. So there's always a way there. You just got to find your special little way. Dude, I've listened to his books like three times, just driving around in the van, dude. I just listened to him nonstop. Like, we went to the Arnold, which is like a, a powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding show in Ohio. It's like two and a half hours for me. And I took my son, my youngest son, he's 17. And um, I just started listening to it. He's like, What is this? And I told him, He would like, he came home and got on Amazon and bought his books and like read the books. Yep. I was like, This is great. So. You know, uh, who's that guy on, uh, I want to say the, not Reno 911, but the other, it's like the cop show and it's got Andy Samberg, that, that big dude who's super buff in that. I'm not sure who it was. Terrence or Terry or something like that. Oh. Um, he's also an American Got Talent, like host. Terry Cruz? Yes, yes. That dude, if you want to listen to somebody who can inspire you in like a different way, he's really good at it. Because I heard him talking one time and he's like, He's like, just start waking up and going to the gym. He's like, you don't have to go and completely destroy and kill yourself the first day. He's like, get in the habit of going, going to the gym, doing a couple of things and leaving. He's like, now your body's used to it. And it's not like torture. He's like, and then just keep doing more and more. And he's like, sooner or later, you're doing what you wanted to in the beginning, but you got there in a more gentle fashion. And I'm like, I'm mad at this. Cause I'm like, everybody just wake up, go do what you're supposed to do. And sometimes people are like, That's, I can't do it. I'm like, well, it's a great way to put it. Whereas like, just start off with something little and just do it and be consistent. And then you can be con- consistent and doing more than that at some point too. Yeah. I think it's a lot of people's problem. They just like, they go and they like go max right off the bat and they just kill right. themselves. And they're just like, they can't, they can't continue it. They don't get used to it. They just, they're used to being a couch potato or whatever. And they go in and they try to do two hours of the gym and they just destroy their lives after a week. They just can't do it no more. Yep. And then they have this horrible picture of what it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, I tried and it was horrible and I hurt myself. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm-hmm. Half hour of your time, half hour is going to change somebody's body. A thousand mm-hmm. percent. Oh, and then yeah. also the results take so long to get there. You know, after a month, you notice the results. After two months, other people start to notice the results. You know what I mean? Like it takes time to get there. And that's, that's also a disheartening part of it. So I try not to, there's no scale. There's none of that. It's just how do I feel and how's it going for me? I'm loving it right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing to trade. A lot of these guys are, I mean, you see they're overweight and stuff just because, you know, they're out and about and it's easy for them to go hit a drive through. And they're, like you said, they're wore out. You get done yeah. day and you don't want to do it. I mean, yep. I mean, I'll have a bag in my van and I'll just see the bag and I just like look forward and drive on home. Just like it's sitting there, it'll be there tomorrow. Guess yep. what? It never comes out of that seat. It just sits there. Yep. Yeah, so. the trade thing makes it very tough because we do work physically demanding jobs. Mm-hmm. But what they are never good for is your heart. So everybody thinks like, 
oh, I worked hard today and I was tired. I'm like, yeah, you worked hard and you were tired, but you never got your heart rate up. So the one thing, if you look at the trades, 85% of us die from some type of heart disease, heart mm -hmm. failure, heart attack. And it's because we work hard, but then we don't treat our bodies well enough to ever get that heart rate up to actually change that function in there. So it's a huge deal. And I think people are catching on. That's uh, the younger generation sucks in a lot of ways, but I think that's something that they have noticed and they want to change a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah like I said, I keep up with my son, but I mean, he, he just, I work with him all the time. He's 20 years old. Um, he used to be, he played football in high school. He was absolutely shredded and jacked and he's coming to this job and he's seen what he, you know, he's been around me my entire life. And when I started this job where I am now, and he's just like, he won't eat the food. He's like, no, I'm not doing this. He's like, you know, cause that's what happened to me. I was an electrician before I started doing this. And um, I changed over, started doing this. And all of a sudden I wasn't up and down ladders. I wasn't moving around all day. I was in a van half the day or I was sitting in front of piece of equipment. I didn't move a whole lot. And then all of a sudden I was getting food handed to me everywhere because you're a hero. Yes. Yeah. No, this is like I was eating two or three meals a day. I eat two meals a day at work and then coming home eating dinner. It's just like it just added up and it just it spiraled out of control. So, Well, yeah, you, and especially people like your son. You come from high school and you played three sports. You did whatever you did. So every day you had some type of exercise that was forced <laughs> on you. Now you get into the trade. There's no exercise that's mm -hmm. forced on you and you don't do anything. That's what happened. You know, I, my buddy sent me a picture one time. I don't know. I've been in the trades a couple of years and he's like, dude, look at yourself. And I'm like holding the shovel and I'm like lean back guts all hanging out. My face looks all fat. And he's just like, look at how big you've got. And like that day when I was like, I'm going to get a gym membership. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like kind of mad at it, but I was also like, no, nah, thanks man. Like I should probably start making some changes. Mm, that's great. That's great. So, um, anything else? Anything else we want to talk about as far as Vega? Um, you guys coming up anything cool you can talk about, or everything hush hush, or you know, it's it's always hush hush. New stuff is coming. If you guys have any uh, galvanized potable water lines, we have a solution coming for that at the end of the year that you're actually going to be able to press onto, so it won't have to be that dielectric union threaded. Find that part. That solution is in the works. It's absolutely coming. So that's super cool. Can't give you dates on it or exactly what it's going to be, but you guys can look forward to that because we're already dealing with those pot of water lines. That's the number one. As far as things that might come, uh, refrigeration might come, uh, geopress might come. That's a way to work hook onto that like HD pipe that's underground because not many people are running steel and galvanized underground. That seems to be a push. So that might be a thing, but you've got people working on stuff all day, every day in different directions and things like that. So. Keep your eyes and ears open and we'll just keep pushing out the stuff every which way we can. Like I said before, get in touch with your DM. If you just listen to this podcast, hit me up. If you don't have my stuff, hit up Pat. He'll get you hooked up with me. We'll figure out who your, who your vegan person is in your area to get you hooked up because that's really the best way to understand the industry in your area, not only for us, but for you guys as well. Sweet, sweet. So I won't keep you much longer, but I do want to tell everybody, make sure you guys – Follow at Vega LLC on all social media and where can we find you at Colton? At Viking Pipe Fitter, Viking underscore pipe fitter. So TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all the different places. I'm there. Um, but the big one definitely, like you said, uh, Vega LLC. It's Vega Press on TikTok. It's Vega LLC on YouTube. Um, if you need to send us an email or get to our website, remember it's going to be Vega LLC dot us because if you just go to vega it's going to take you to a german site so vega llc dot us that's the trick that's how you actually get to anything uh, that has to do with us it has locations finders products all that kind of stuff in there as well sweet man well thanks for coming on dude i appreciate your time today thank you so much yep see ya all right peace if you guys would please consider subscribing rating and reviewing the podcast it really helps us grow and helps us know which direction to move in also if you have any suggestions for guests, please email me at commercialkitchenchronicles at gmail.com. Or if you want to be a guest, email me. Love to have you guys on. Thanks a lot. See you next week.